Hey, it's me, Dustin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. So, if you've watched Smarter Every Day for any length of time, you know that it's about whatever I'm thinking about, like an eclipse, or how brains work, or helicopters, or mantis shrimp, or whatever. You didn't know this about me, but my first internet presence was a website called Destin's World of Woodworking. Not making that up. I sold little wooden make, made pinball machines. It was silly, but I loved it. I love woodworking. So, my wife and I are remodeling a house. So right now, these 150 year old wooden beams have fascinated me. In this video, I wanna show you what it takes to reclaim beams from an old barn and put them in a modern house. Let's get smarter every day. Okay, our story starts in a town I used to live in called Coleman, Alabama. There's a store here called Southern Accents that specializes in what's called architectural antiques. It's the kind of place you can get lost in for hours. In fact, they give you a free Coke when you walk in the door and send you on your way to wander through the warehouses. When you get back there, you'll find that they keep everything amazing from old houses that are supposed to be torn down. These guys go into these homes and reclaim all the cool stuff you wouldn't really think about. For example, they have super cool old doorknobs, antiques, sinks, doors, everything is organized so you can find the exact thing you're looking for and they have a full blown woodworking shop in case you need to modify something. People come here from all over the world so whenever my wife and I are in town we make a point to drop in and check out the new arrivals because these guys go through stuff all the time. Colby explains what they do this way. Old hardware. Yeah, just anything we find that we think is salvageable, whether it's hardware, you've got mantles, light fixtures, old doors, um, a little bit of everything. But what we like to do is, is bring it in, sell it as is strip it, sand it, refinish it, repair it, whatever we can do to get it back to its original form or state. That's what we like to do. This is a dangerous store for couples. Before I knew what was happening, my wife was working out a deal with the owner Garland to exchange some beams for the footage you're watching right now. Fast forward a few weeks and she sends me down to their reclaimed structural wood warehouse, which was way more awesome than I expected. Dang, man. How you been? Doing well, how are you? Good seeing you, brother. This is ridiculous. This is my first time here. Are you kidding me? I haven't been here. Shut up. Yeah. How have you not been here? I thought you'd already been here like 10 times. No, I've never been to this warehouse. This was an old basketball gym for Wallace State Community College. Yeah. Took over and sold all the stuff out of it and then filled it full of wood. That's awesome, man. And this is all like reclaimed wood from different yeah. different things. Reclaimed wood. You got everything from slabs over there to antique floor. That's a slab? Floor. All those are wall and that's a black walnut slab. Yeah. Holy moly. Where did you get that? Can I talk you out of two beams for the root, for the ceiling? Yeah, you got them out here. Really? She's already picked them out now, the ones you wanted. Really? Uh, yeah. No, I didn't know that. They were hand hewn. I hope is what you want because we yeah. got them ready to go. <laughs> you see them first. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be front porch columns for an old rustic cabin that we're doing. We'll cut the end straight. That's an old sawmill style. That's right? right. So you see every one of those circular saw marks right there? Yeah is a tooth of a huge saw blade back in the day, 1905, 1910, 1920, that would come around and hit the wood. So every time there was a tooth that hit that wood, you would see those circular saw marks. So you usually go by circular saw marks or by hand-hewn beams. And hand-hewn is when they had a round tree and they took a big hatchet and then took ax marks and that's all those chop marks there. And this is called hand-hewn texture and where the other one is called circular sawn. So this is a lot older, I would think. Usually around 1840s to 1880s, uh -huh. where that's around 1880s, usually about 1905, but all the way up till today even. So yeah. that's the difference in the two. That's the two textures. So you have a hand hewn beam, so you can see where they chop them with the different ax marks. That's awesome. Round tree square. Yep. Probably 1850s, 1860s, circa. Uh -huh. And so this, um, which is kind of interesting, was one long 32, 33 foot beam, and we cut it in half to get two 16 footers out of it. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Now, the difference in some of the hand hewn beams that you see is a lot of them have mortise holes that are here. Uh huh. And then, so you hear of mortise and tendon, where the mortise is the pocket, the tendon goes straight through, and then you peg it through the end of it. Right. So these are the mortise holes where another beam was coming into and intersecting into this. Right. There these are the, the pegs, yeah, that <laughs> would come out of it. They hand yeah. produced and hand. And no way. Oh, and that yeah. came out of this one. So we thought it'd be kind of cool to put it back in at some point. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this one right here. So you'd have to hammer it back in. But now it sticks back in there. And that's so you interlock the beam by, that was your screws and nails back in 1840s and 1850s. What I like to do is cut them so yep. you can see it. Then from that, we want to come back and borax this one more time. That helps any insects that are inside this beam that we don't know about. They can lay dormant for 15 to 20 years. So you always need to treat the beams or put it in the kiln. All mm -hmm. right? so it, it to kill them? To kill them. And so that's what we want to make sure we do after we cut it. 
So that way, borax is just a powder. It comes out to the so the insects live inside here. They come out to the surface to get water and moisture because they have to have that to live. When they eat that borax that was on the outside of this, which is just a clear substance and it's harmless to humans, you can buy it at Dollar General. Right. right. Then they go back inside here, but they, they, it's like a huge salt tablet. It just dries them out and they can't get back out to get moisture and they're gone. Wow. Builders today go to great lengths to make sure that everything they use in a modern house is square so that everything fits together. Old beams that are cut by hand are not square, so this is the hardest thing about using old beams in a new house. Garland has invested in a special type of bandsaw that solves this problem. So after scanning the beams for old hand cut nails, They'll run them through this saw, and I must admit, part of me hates the idea of cutting something so old. But if you think about it, this is kind of like a rebirth. That's wild, man. Isn't that, cool, though, how it does that? that really is cool. It's like breathing new life into it. So, what kind of wood is that, you think? It's actually, believe it or not, a maple. Yeah, I can see it. Now that you say it, I thought it was gonna be something a little bit lighter, like a hickory, but it's a maple, so it's a real nice colored light grain. Real it's tight grain too. Tight and hard. Though. That's what they make bowling pins out of. At this point, you can choose to use this distressed wood, or you can treat it and make it darker, not with a stain, but with a special a coating back. called Brie Wax, which comes in several colors, so we had to pick out which version we wanted to use. You guys deliver too, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> When they delivered the beams to the house, I've got to admit, that's when it sunk in. I've got one shot with this board, and if I mess it up, it's messed up forever. So, I hired an expert. Okay, this is Phil, he's my buddy. We go to church together, and Covenant Homes? Covenant Homes. We're gonna put the, the beam up here, right? Right, correct. What so, we're gonna do is come in here on this crown mold. We're gonna leave the, the uh, baseboard, it's a two-step crown that they have right here. Right. And we're gonna leave the baseboard there to tie into this. So how are you gonna pull it up? Are we gonna have a gap between the beam and the, the ceiling? No. After the two by fours were mounted where they were supposed to be, we began the notching process. This was way harder than I thought it would be. If we did it wrong, we could split the logs on accident, so we took our time and cut it out one pass at a time with a circular saw. We then chiseled out the rest of the material and we checked the fit. I feel I feel like you're ah. I feel like you're disrespecting the craftsman that made this originally. Progress is coming up. <laughs> oh man, look at how they drilled it. <laughs> oh, that's with a hand drill. You think that was done by hand? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Because it's left those. Yeah. That is cool. They yeah, I bet that a guy with arms this big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He cleaned it up with a chisel. And the idea is to mount a two by four on the ceiling. And then the, the beam will fit flush right on the ceiling. We'll be able to push it up to the ceiling. This is why Garland's flat sawmill is so important. You want it to be flush so that it looks like it's a structural element of the ceiling. We started by shimming the log up to the ceiling, but our notch was so tight that we couldn't get it pushed all the way up to the top, even though we were using wedges under the 2x4. We then figured out the right way to do it. Why aren't we just using the drivers and pulling it on up there? Screwing it in? That'd be too easy. Keep on driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Like he grew there. All right. It's not fair that you can stand on the ground and do that. Suck it up. Come on, ladder. I still can't reach that high. Come on. Come on. Okay, the final few things are important because the devil's in the details. You gotta make it look like it was structurally put here, right? So we cut these plugs. It's important when you put the plugs in that you align the grain of the wood so that it looks like it was there on purpose. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you remember this peg from the mortise and tenon joint? Well, some dude cut this out with a knife 150 years ago. It, it kind of hurt my soul, but we cut it. And the reason we cut it is because I wanna put it up here and that two by four is in the way. But if you put that peg in there and let it stick out, it looks like it was there on purpose. So anyway, it's kind of like an homage to the guy that originally did it. Last thing, if you had a gap right here at the edge, it would be a dead giveaway that this is not structural. So we had to cover that up. What we did is we took that drop that Garland made with the sawmill, made a picture frame so that we could use weathered looking wood all the way to the edge of this face plate here. And then we just terminated the crown molding right there it looks like it's a structural beam. I love these. I know it's a different video, but they make the house feel a lot more cozy. We also had a hand-hewn beam put right here. Uh, Garland gave us one of these as well. 
it, it makes the mantle look awesome. Everybody that comes in here comments on the look of these beams, and it's just an old house that we just put two beams up. It looks really neat, and the mantle matches. I like it. Anyway, it makes a house a home, and cozy is the word. Yeah, I like them because they're cozy. Yeah. yeah. So this is another thing that makes a house a home. HelloFresh is the sponsor for this video. It's awesome for several reasons. They deliver food to your house. I like food, good food, and I like it at my house. The ingredients are fresh and pre-measured so you don't waste stuff. It's healthy, it's good. Did I mention they send it to your house? Because they send it to your house. It's so stinking easy, even I can follow the recipes. We used to teach our kids how to cook. Seriously, this has been such a big deal for my family. We asked them to sponsor and they said yes. So here's the deal. For $30 off the first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com and enter the promo code SMARTER. Three different plans to choose from, classic, veggie, and family. Supporting the sponsors is a big deal for Smarter Every Day and all, but in this case, it's a big deal for you. Seriously, try it. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Smarter Every Day. Feel free to subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. You can check out Southern Accents on the internet. They sell beans and stuff online. It's pretty cool. Big thanks to HelloFresh, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me see pictures of your beams in your house. That was dumb. I have no idea why I said that. The next video is a collaboration with the Slow Mo Guys, so feel free to subscribe. It's worth it. Anyway, I'm Destin, getting smarter every day. Have a good one.